Hello everybody, I'm Dr Sarah Ward and I'm going to be talking about rain gauges, terrain gardens, exploring the role of urban drainage engineers with school children in Taunton. And this was um, a project funded by the Royal Academy of Engineers Ingenious Programme um, and done in collaboration with a range of partners. So the project itself was called West Country Women Working with Water or 5W. And to put the project in context, there were some um, agendas that we wanted to embed within the project around STEM subjects and achieving gender balance within STEM um, and how in particular to do this in underserved areas, um, as well as focusing on the limited experience in schools that engineers have um, and in doing outreach and public engagement and developing materials to help engineers to develop those skills as well as looking at um, living with environmental change, urban drainage and other watery topics, which can be pretty com complex to explain, as well as focusing on the hydro citizens of the future. So children and students in schools learning about environmental change, climate change and uncertainty in different futures. And as part of that, we focused on Taunton because it has a history and a projected future of flooding. And it was also already part of the um, EU funded Somerset Sponge Sponge 2020 project, which gave us a real opportunity to focus on particular demographics within the 5W project. The focus on Taunton came from um, some pre existing work that had been done by the DEFRA funded local action project, um, and that was focused on the floods and sustainable drainage systems potential in Taunton. Uh, and areas were selected using 12 environmental, social, culture and economic indicators to make strategic decisions. And we decided it would be useful to follow up that work um, and use that as a basis for selecting the areas that we would focus on within the project. And the schools that came forward um, based on those um, indicators were in the Holway and Lingford area of areas of Taunton. So we focused on those. So in conversation with the teachers um, and the eco champions at the schools, we developed some aims and some objectives um, and we also um, co-created these with the engineers and the educational professionals working across the different partner organisations. So we identified we wanted to explore the everyday roles um, of creative engineers. We wanted to demonstrate a gender balanced team. We wanted to co-develop a set of workshops co-design some rain gardens um, with the school children, the teachers at the schools, and then get those systems installed in the schools and follow that up by co-developing some citizen science activities after the installations had um, been up and running for a while. So I'm going to give you just a, a bit of a talk through how we did this, some things that we created, some things that we learned, and then uh, go through a little bit of the evaluation to, to show you how we did. So first of all, we learned how to work in schools with children and we co-created session plans. Uh, we looked at developing in-class worksheets that the teachers could use before we um, went along to do the workshops um, and also that we could take with us while doing the workshops. We had to learn to turn expert language into something understandable. Um, so we had to kind of de-jargon uh, the, the language and the materials. And we also had to learn classroom control and ways of moving around the class um, that the children and the, the students were used to. Um, and this is where we learned to really appreciate how um, teachers and the methods that teachers use to bring classrooms, which can be quite rowdy, under control um, in quite a, an easy um, and stress-free way. So just shown here is a example of a, a lesson plan that we created focusing on three questions which the children could engage with um, and these were co-created between the engineers and the um, engagement professionals. So building on from that we did workshops and activities in the schools and these are some um, photos of the activities that we created. So on the top left, we've got the puddle treasure hunt and mapping 
and that was where we got the children outside luckily the weather was with us um, looking for puddles or areas where puddles um, would form so areas around their school where they knew that water would gather we also hunted for downpipes um, and lots of different things related to um, urban drainage around the school. The children had print out GIS sheets of their school so that they could plot them onto the maps and then when we took them back in the classroom we sort of compiled them and, and saw um, commonalities between the different groups that went out and um, paroled around the school. In the centre there um, we've got one of the workshops where we're looking at um, the maps and also the sustainable drainage system top trumps which we developed in the project which I'll come on to on the next slide but up in the top right we've got an example of a poster um, workshop where the children were sticking, sticking stickers onto the posters to indicate the kind of things that they would like to see in their um, sustainable drainage systems and rainwater gardens so unfortunately we had um, a workshop before these but the camera broke so we don't have any photos of it but we had these um, boards created which had buckets on them with different substrates in them so different materials like sand gravel um, soil plants and we did um, infiltration experiments to show the children hand, and the children were doing it themselves as well in the workshops how water goes through different materials at different rates and how it takes different times and using stopwatches um, and buckets of water we had a great time messing around with lots of different um, substrates to find out how water goes through them we were also really lucky to have um, Kath Hassel along with us who was also Royal Academy of Engineering funded to do a second Frankie the Flamingo book I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with the Frankie book series um, and Kath came along to hold her um, workshops for her second book with the engineers to train us how to um, do the workshops but also um, delivered one of the workshops in the schools with us. So the Suds Tops Trumps that I referred to earlier were um, developed and we came up with a, a dozen different cards um, for those not familiar with Suds Tops Trumps uh, with, with top trumps just google top trumps if you if you've not come across it before it's it's a game there are a pack of cards and each card has different categories on it that score differently and each card is a different character and you basically have a competition to see who whose character can score the highest in different categories so we came up with categories in relation to sustainable drainage so things like storage or space um, how they looked, whether they cleaned water, whether they required a lot of upkeep and we used raindrops to symbolise um, how they would score um, and across the project we gave each card a type of sustainable drainage and also a person um, from the project so that there was multiple dimensions that the, the children could engage with when playing with the cards. So the photo that you can see there is um, a group around the table playing with the suds top trumps um, and also with the poster activity as well and that poster was developed to enable the children and the parents and the teachers to vote for different things that they would like to see um, in the rain gardens or the, the drainage um, designs so this one focuses on the colors of the plants we had ones on smell on taste on um, all sorts of different things which enabled um, views and um, feelings to be expressed around preferences for the designs and then the next part was to actually come up with those designs which you can see the result of here um, when they were installed um, and then planted up so the children were involved with the planting we had different planting days at, at the different schools and then we also had celebration events at the um, installations so that the parents could come along, other people around the school that maybe had seen what was going on could come along um, and find out what had happened. Um, and the cloud on the left hand side was it was really important to the children that the um, plants planted were edible because the school has guinea pigs. So that was a, a really nice feature that the children had thought of there. And so they 
grew over the summer um, from a, a pile of mud in, in one case into a lovely um, planted area for water retention at one of the schools. So installed some rain gauges that would hopefully um, enable us to do some citizen science, although because of the um, COVID situation, we're having to think about how that might be taken forward. So how did we do? Um, well, we did an evaluation, which was uh, forms and interviews with the, the students, the teachers and the parents. Um, and in total, we did 17 events, uh, created a YouTube video, and we worked with over 150 students and teachers and parents. Eight engineers, um, and those engineers reported being uh, quite or very confident in engaging with children and parents. And we inspired 60% of students to want to find out more about engineering, including 67% of female pupils, which really hit our targets. Um, and we found that 85% of parents were more likely to encourage STEM involvement, which was really um, heartening to hear. We also put the teachers, um, sorry, we also put the workshop activities in the teacher's guide for the Drought Risk and New project book. So in summary, each engineer participated in at least two types of activity um, shown here in the graph um, and people reported gaining new insights into different methods that they could use to co-create different things around climate change adaptation. So thank you for listening um, and any questions?